Uh, Assalamu alaikum guys, yes indeed, or like the French like to say bonjour, <laughs> yes yes, oui oui. Behave yourself, there's kids watching. What? Nice French. Yeah, whatever. Nice French. Yeah, whatever. I'm not making it up, mate. For God's sake. Leaders have noticed that the incompetent running of the country will be ignored so long as they are combating this boogeyman that they call the Muslims. <laughs> This concept of having a boogeyman proves very successful for governments because anytime they're struggling with doing the actual job, they can just blame this boogeyman group. Yeah, there's been the Bavarian Illuminati in the past, Catholics, Jews, Blacks, and now it's just the turn of the Muslims. There are many leaders that have taken this strategy. Trump, of course, we know with the Muslim ban and retweeting far right and even his policies as well, and him staying quiet whenever an Islamophobic act happens. And we move the capital of Israel to Jerusalem. That's for the evangelicals. You've got Boris Johnson. Well, he's made far right commentaries in the past and he got the stamp of approval of far right leaders like Tommy Robinson. And everyone should vote for Boris Johnson. And Katie Hopkins. Yeah, you've got far right in Australia, you've got Bolsonaro in Brazil, and of course Modi. Yeah, Modi, the absolute Mr. Donald Trump. And now Macron, with the elections coming up, he has also decided to get a piece of the pie. Of course, his pie is croissant and snail flavored. It's probably going to please people on the right, on the far right, because he will not say so, but he has the 2022 election inside. So this mug is putting forward an anti-separatism bill. It's going to be officially discussed in parliament around the December area and if it goes ahead it should come into effect by next year. Now here are some of the clauses. Number one he wants to restrict homeschooling. Yeah, he doesn't want to look at why people are keeping their kids at home. Nah, <laughs> forget about our inadequate education system. Nah, 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 nah. We gotta force people, force them to go to school. And if people are taking it upon themselves to educate their kids at home, nah, nah, gotta ban, ban, ban it, mate. Ban it, mate. Don't forget, we are a liberal country, mate. Freedom, mate. Freedom to eat as many croissants and snails as you want, mate. Not to forget as there are certain times where women go to the swimming pools and men go because obviously women don't want to be touched up by the men and ogled and you know that sort of stuff but that's not good enough for Macron. But obviously you're right. He wants to force men and women you know in an environment where more sexual harassment can take place so all those uh, pervs of course will be looking forward to this bill. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Not to mention forcing Muslim women and women in general to shake the hands of men. Obviously uh, he's saying you know women refusing to uh, shake hands or to share a swimming pool uh, with men and as you uh, rightly pointed out homeschooling will really be an exception. Uh, not going to school or going to school but not to some music classes for instance. And not to mention you know I'm saying speaking against all this covering up business yeah. He denounced uh, uh, women uh, in full veil uh, tending to, to children and so on. So yeah that's right show your bits and bobs to your seven eight year old kids, sexualize them from a small age and then sling the pedos in prison and claim you are looking after society mate. See. I mean, forget all the rape statistics and pedo statistics. Don't worry, just carry on eating your croissant and snail flavored pie. Those of you that are like me, I just dozed off when you were talking there. Let me summarize it. France is just acting like a state pimp. And I did mention a few problems that are plaguing France, but now nah, forget about that. As Macron saying, our way of life is perfect, mate. Uh, he said the problem is not secularism in France. Uh, he said this is our values, this is not the problem. The problem is what he described as Islamist separatism. What? Bro, what are you talking about man? And this is where this mug has gone way too far. Islam is a religion that lives in a crisis today, everywhere in the world. Pigeon-hearted, pusillanimous weasel. I think this mug is getting Islam confused with Muslim. Islam is based upon the Quran and the sayings and actions of the Prophet peace be upon him. Whilst Muslims on the other hand of course are corruptible by 
you know, society. Oh! oh, oh what is oh, oh, <laughs> But what this guy is doing is recycling an argument that's been done 10 years ago. Yeah, it could have worked 10 years ago, but now people are a bit more knowledgeable to the fact that, you know what, this media is, you know, this clear disparity that's taking place in the media against Islam. But of course, because of the growing far right and the adherence to the far right are mostly the, you know, the lower class. Yeah, because the lower class don't have the facilities to educate themselves on geopolitics and the history of these issues because they are becoming the majority of the vote base. Governments are now changing their stance to cater more for the far right. But Macron, you know as well as I do, it's not Islam that's causing these issues. It's the West's obsession with Islam. Let me give you a few points here. Yeah? Let's start off with the creating of fake propaganda content. All you have to do is search bell Pottinger, not to mention the West clearly admitting that they have supported groups like Al Qaeda and ISIS. And we know that this this was growing. We were watching. We saw that that Daesh was growing in strength, and we thought Assad was threat. Uh, we thought, however, we could probably manage uh, you know that Assad might then negotiate. We had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen, equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan. The people we are fighting today we funded 20 years ago. In my 30 years experience of uh, of working with these groups actually on both ways, on both sides um, of radical groups and having been involved with them, nearly always standing behind radical groups has been a state actor or an intelligence service or, or, of a state actor. For all these decades since we have been using Wahhabism uh, in its radicalized form in order to pursue Western interests. So we've had this deep ambivalence in Western policy where we're both in bed with terrorists and fighting them at the same time. Yeah, you got Iran. That's right. They removed a democratically elected leader, Mohammad Mossadegh, and replaced him with a tyrant, the Shah. All you need to do is search something called the Iran Contra scandal. Not to mention drawing borders in Muslim lands that have caused conflicts that are even ongoing as we speak. You just need to search the Durand Line, Sykes and Pico, the Berlin Conference. I did mention some leaders that have been installed by the West, the Shah in Iran I mentioned, but you've got many others here. Yeah? Suharto in Indonesia, who was a tyrant. Mobutu of Congo, yeah, they called him one of the worst dictators. Uh, Yusavimbi of Angola, Abacha of Nigeria, Samuel Doe of Liberia. Not to mention the drone strikes and the use of illegal weaponry that decimate the population like depleted uranium that causes cancer. But half of the population of Iraq I think got cancer because of depleted uranium. White phosphorus that melts the skin of whoever it drops on. All because of the West's obsession with oil. Lord Crewe said in the 1920s and the Foreign Office in 1958 that the aim was to keep Arabia divided so no one unified power could challenge Western interests. Which is a huge topic and, yes. and I mean it was interesting to hear him talk about Islam in those terms and just say you know this is a religion in crisis around the world. Some people might be somewhat offended by that. Yes, but some people uh, also might say okay that's true. He, he said... You know yeah and let's end with this a nonsensical response. If this point was made against discrimination of LGBT and the Jewish community and the response was uh, some people might say uh, okay that's true. You think what on earth is wrong with this minus five peanut brain uh, Mr. Potato Head looking fool. The fact that people are so obsessed with Islam it shows that Islam is a force to be reckoned with in a positive way because let's face it you just got a lot of evil systems nowadays and Islam is the only one that's speaking against them yeah and refuses to change with the tide. Let's leave it there guys until next time. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum.